So my last podcast episode was about building buzz and using pre-launch content to get your audience ready and prime them for an offer that you're preparing to share with the world. So of course, as soon as my podcast team uploaded it into the cloud or wherever it goes, you can tell I don't do that myself. I realized, oh snap, I forgot one of the most important pieces. So this entire podcast episode is all about my LinkedIn polls strategy to spark conversation with your ideal audience. And to be honest, it doesn't necessarily have to be during a pre-launch as you can use these anytime to build community. After all, I define thought leadership as the consistent practice of using our passion, lived experience, and credibility as fuel to spark trust and community as we imagine and shape the future together for the better. So keep listening in to steal the strategy for yourself and start building relationships with your people on LinkedIn. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Campfire Circle. I'm your host, Tanya Bhattacharya, and I empower purpose-driven women in building influential personal brands that drive change and raise revenue. We all talk about getting a seat at the table, but why though? Who wants to sit in a stuffy boardroom anyway? Let's reimagine the ultimate space of leadership as a campfire circle, where we share stories that inspire movements, build brave communities to huddle together with for warmth, and where there is always room. Come sit with us. So let me set the stage for why LinkedIn polls and why building community for that matter is even important. So my framework around building a thought leadership personal brand that moves the needle, that builds influence, that builds your personal change-making capacity, so on and so forth, is what I like to call my 3C framework, right? So the first C is clarity. You need to have clarity in your brand message, meaning you understand who the leader you're working towards embodying is. You can say why you solve the problem that you solve. And for that matter, you understand what is the transformation that you make possible, right? You know who you're speaking to and all of these foundational things so that you can differentiate yourself and really stand out as you stand up for your mission. So the second C is about content. And you need to have content, right? To disseminate your wisdom and your expertise so that people can actually experience it so that this your thoughts and your perspective gets out of your brain and into the world. And if you have been listening for any period of time, my favorite place to share that content is LinkedIn, right? So you can get in front of the movers, the shakers, the potential clients, the referral sources, the amplifiers, and the list goes on, who are all on LinkedIn to build their network and create impact. But the third C is community, right? You want to turn your audience into a community that is ready to roll up their sleeves and help you make shift happen. And there's a nuance between audience and community. Like what is the difference between those two things? And I'd love for you to answer that for yourself and see what is coming up for you. What is the difference? And for me, the difference I think is that you can really depend and rely on a community. They're closer to you. They're hyping you up in rooms that you're not even in. They are down to support you because of a deeper why that you share. You both share a unified vision. And there's something about the way that you show up in the world that has enrolled them into an experience of realizing that they're not alone with this overarching problem or issue. And they recognize you as a guide, right? A seasoned guide. And so out of the three C's, I feel like community is often the missing piece. Usually when people feel like they're doing all the right things on LinkedIn, they're showing up, they've done work on figuring out their brand message, but they're still not getting traction it's usually that piece of the framework isn't being done. So without community, it feels lonely on LinkedIn. You're not getting a ton of traction. It feels like a lift. There's not a lot of people who are really showing up and amplifying you as you vulnerably share. And yeah, like engagement can sometimes be considered a little bit of a vanity metric, but I'm not actually talking about likes here. I'm talking about you showing up and sharing your lived experiences I'm talking about you showing up and providing value and having it be witnessed and received in the way that it deserves. When something comes up that you want to refer out, you have a network on LinkedIn. 
When you decide that you want to try using affiliates for your next launch, you have an immediate list of LinkedIn connections and people in your community that you know will be down, right? If it works in their calendar, at least. So without community, it's a lot harder to know where your next client or your next opportunity is coming from because you're not feeding that pipeline so that your business opportunities, so that your visibility opportunities are just coming in sustainably and naturally. And essentially, you're not wrapped up in a community that wants to support you. I feel like Instagram is really about visuals. I feel like TikTok is a lot about entertainment and quick, short videos. And I say that as someone who doesn't really use Instagram or TikTok, I could be wrong. Call me out if you want. But I know LinkedIn and I feel like the currency of LinkedIn is relationships. And so when you build community and relationships on LinkedIn, people are inspired by you. You're inspired by them. You're in this work together. And even if you haven't met a lot of your community in person, you know, they've got your back. And that can't be overstated when you're working on big visionary issues, right? Big visions don't get accomplished alone, whether that's tackling anti-racism in the workplace, whether that's advocating for mental health for pregnant women, whether that's changing the nonprofit landscape to be more equitable and create spaces of belonging, like whatever it is that you work on, these big visions don't get accomplished alone. And so part of thought leadership work is engaging with your community. Well, it's engaging with your audience and turning them into a community because your content only goes so far. I interviewed my client friend, Casey, in a previous episode, which I'll tag in the show notes. And she said something that lives in my head rent-free. I was like, dang, that's so good. And pretty much what she said is that as she started to show up on LinkedIn with her thought leadership, the connections that she was making were more genuine. And there were connections that she didn't think were actually possible to make online. They were relationships that previously she would build by attending conferences, speaking in person at events, meeting people face-to-face, one-on-one coffee chats, right? Stuff like that. But showing up powerfully as a thought leader rooted in your why means you're attracting the type of people you want to attract, right? The ones who have similar desires and journeys. But once your content has attracted them into your world, building community is the next right step. So content may be king, but non-salesy engagement is queen. That's how you build your community ecosystem. And it does not have to feel icky, I swear, I promise you. And so these LinkedIn poll strategies are non-icky, at least in my opinion, and it can actually feed a creative side to you, right? So let's just talk about it. Let's get into it. So last quarter, when I was launching the LinkedIn content sprint, it was a lazy launch, which is so dang on brand for me. And what I mean by lazy launch is I didn't do a live webinar. I didn't try to funnel people towards this thing that I had to prepare for and stress over and blah, blah, blah. Instead, I used a LinkedIn poll strategy, along with other kinds of pre-launch content that I covered in my last episode of this podcast. So I did a LinkedIn poll, which I have linked in the show notes so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And I asked, what keeps you from batching LinkedIn content for your visibility and thought leadership? And so I chose a specific question that was directly related and rooted in the transformation that was promised inside the offer I was launching, which was to batch six months worth of thought leadership content in a one month sprint. And so take a moment to consider what is the problem you solve and the transformation you provide, right? Do you have clarity on that? What stops people from getting there on their own? Can you do a poll about it? And if you don't want to live in the barriers, maybe you could instead ask about, okay, what is your ultimate vision or dream or goal if you're able to do this thing? Don't overthink it. Probably the first thing that pops into mind for you is perfect. And a good gauge or a good check on if you have picked the right question and answers is whether or not you could talk at length about those two, three, or four answers you come up with easily. If you were just thrust in front of a stage and asked to talk about those things, you could just off the cuff start talking about it because they are so, you are such a practice guide in this thing. And so back to the poll, 61 people voted in that poll. And with LinkedIn polls, I can see how folks respond, but it's externally confidential, meaning other people can't see how other people are voting. They can just see the results in terms of percentages once they've voted. 
And that's good, especially if you work on an issue that is stigmatized or misunderstood in any kind of way. And as social impact leaders, like who doesn't really? So if you're worried about whether or not a poll is too something or that nobody will participate, it doesn't hurt to just try it. And actually that brings me to a point, which is like a lot of people have said to me, well, I haven't tried a poll because I'm afraid nobody will respond. And here's the thing, when you're scrolling LinkedIn and you see a poll with one response or two responses or no responses, do you ever think to yourself, man, that person's a loser? No, you probably don't think about it at all, which is why you're like, huh, I've never actually noticed that about other people's polls. And it's the same thing here, right? So in undergrad psych, I learned about a thing called the spotlight effect. Humans tend to way overestimate how much other people think about us or even notice what we're doing. There was a study done at Cornell about this, where the researchers asked a college student to wear a bright yellow Barry Manilow (laughs) t-shirt and walk into a room of strangers. And so, of course, the students who, you know, the student wearing the shirt who was participating in the study assumed that everyone in the room would notice them and remember their embarrassing shirt when they asked about it later. And it turns out that only about 20% of the people in the room noticed them at all. And so it's the same thing here. Don't worry about looking dumb because it's hard enough to get people to look at you and remember you at all. Not you, you, but any aspiring thought leader, coach, consultant, service provider, social entrepreneur. And that's why showing up consistently is key here, right? Okay, so that was enough of a tangent. Let me get back to the strategy. So 61 people voted on the poll that I'm talking about. As the creator of the poll, I can see how people voted and there's a little message button next to each person so I can really easily send them a message or DM, which also sends the results of the poll with my message. So it just makes it really, LinkedIn makes it really easy for you to follow up with the people who are voting. The button looks like a little circle with a blue arrow. If you do it, you'll see what I'm talking about. But when I'm reaching out to them, I wanted to send something helpful based on them taking the time to vote in the poll and share something about themselves with me. They didn't have to do that, but they did. So I actually recorded an entire podcast episode about breaking down the barriers behind batching LinkedIn content that was based on the poll results, right? And that podcast episode came out as I launched the sprint. And so I sent a private message to each of the people who voted in the poll using that little button so that they could see the poll I was even talking about. And I said, hey, got some niceties, whatever. Thanks for voting. This is what you voted for. I took the poll results and I created a short podcast episode to help folks overcome these barriers. Let me know if it would be helpful to send over the link or do you want me to send over that link? And so you'll notice I didn't just immediately send them the episode because to me that feels a little bit icky or a little bit spam-like. So instead, I leaned on permission-based conversation and waited for them to say, yeah, I actually do want that, thanks. And about half of them, or 30 out of the 61, said yes. And so I sent the podcast link to them and I invited them to reach out with any questions that came up for them after they took a listen. And so how cool is that, right? By voting in the poll, they were essentially raising their hand to say, this is relevant to me and I fit into your equation somehow. And then for those 30 people who additionally said yes to the podcast link, they were essentially continuing to lean in for more information. And because they were also seeing my other launch related content, they knew there was an offer or solution available to them in that moment to solve that problem. And you might be saying, well, Tanya, I don't have a podcast, so this won't work for me. It actually will. It's totally fine if you don't have a podcast. You could do a blog instead. You could do a video or you could do literally anything. One of my favorite tools is Loom. I think I talked about that in the last episode. So do a Loom and just talk for five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, about each of the answers that you included in your poll and your perspectives on that thing that you asked about. Provide value, provide actionable insights, share your unique opinion about where people have gotten this wrong in the past so that people can get a glimpse of what it would be like to work with you and if they vibe with your your essence, right? To see if you two vibe together. 
And remember, what you share in this piece could be the spark that inspires someone to get out of pre-contemplation and into action. And that's awesome. That's a win no matter what. So that's one way to use a poll in relationship to a launch. Another more fun and creative way to get to know your audience is just to have fun. Just do a LinkedIn poll asking about something that showcases your personality, that showcases your interests, that talks about something that you geek out about, something that's deeply personal or enmeshed in your mosaic of like lived experience. And so some of those examples I've done in the past include a poll about what Hogwarts house do you belong to, right? It's just silly. Like you're not, it's just fun. And Gryffindor happened to be the clear winner. Although I'm a Ravenclaw, so that's fine. Another poll that I did was, you know, fellow kids of Asian parents, what kind of fruit did your parents cut for you most when you were growing up? And with that question, if you know, you know. And apples was the winner. Although for me personally, it was always oranges. And you know what? The comment section on that poll was like totally engaged and popping off. And I'm linking the fruit poll in the show notes so you can check it out. And I mean, talk about building community in the comment section, right? We understood each other. We had a shared language and a shared experience that we could relate to each other on based on our experience as children of Asian parents, generally immigrants. And so, you know, that forms a bond. That forms a bond and relationship with those people that then turns into whatever it's meant to be, right? And not everybody has to become a client. Maybe they're just a kind person. Maybe they're a referral source. Maybe five years from now, they're gonna reach out and say, oh my gosh, like my mom actually would be a great fit for your VIP day. That happens all the time. It surprises me every time, but it's that's just the magical outcome of building community. And so what's something personal and unique to your perspective and your lived experience that you could share and just have fun with it, right? You can do this. So when you do your poll, send it to me as a LinkedIn message or just email it to me, whatever, get it over to me so that I can vote and participate and make some noise in the comments. I can't wait to see what you're going to create, my friend. Talk to you next time. What'd you think? Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or even better, reach out and let me know through lumosmarketing.co. Yes, that's lumos as in the illumination spell from Harry Potter. Because when you shine, magical things happen. You can get social with me on LinkedIn. And of course, check out the show notes to stay in touch with our guests. Let's talk soon.